East 6, Ark of Napishta marked a special entry in the franchise for multiple reasons. It was the first entry in the series after an 8 year hiatus, East struggled to find its footing after the success of East 1 and 2, and Falcom would try multiple ways to breathe new life into the genre. After the lackluster entry East 5 lost Kef in Kingdom of Sand, Falcom needed to go big or the series was doomed to die. East 6, Ark of Napishtim also served as a jumping point to tie all previous games together, connecting lore regarding the LV and even tying the events of Celseta and East 1 and 2 together. It also served as an entry Falcom would use to set the lore going forward and remake games to better fit into the narrative of Ark of Napishtim. Creatures, groups, races, terms, and lore were all expanded upon, making what is arguably the best story the series has had thus far. Let's find out how E6 stacks up against other games in the series. Sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel, and let's review E6, Ark of Napishtim. In regular East fashion, Adol washes up on the shores to be discovered by two young girls, Isha and Olha, the priestesses of the local tribe called the Retta. Adol recovers from his wounds, only to, only to be told by Chief Ord he needs to leave as soon as he recovers. Other Asterians have been washing up on the Canaan Islands, after being shipwrecked from the vortex of the surrounding island. Though some are peaceful, it does not stop Sem from fighting and causing trouble for the Retta. After making his way to the fountain, Adol saves Isha from a giant creature known as a Galba. This puts him in significant favor of Chief Ord, who gives Adol a magical blade capable of magic and constructed from a special metal called MLS. It is here Chief Ord tasks Adol with bringing the mirror which was stolen from them back, and Adol makes his way into the runes. Throughout the game, there are many nods and references to past games. While I still think you can jump into any East game you want and enjoy it, the subtle little hints and characters you will meet along the way will significantly boost your enjoyment if you have played the first five entries in the series. Graba from East 1 makes a return, Terra from East 5 plays a minor role in the story, as does Adol's friend Dogi. It's a heartwarming story, paced well, and really does a great job trying to tie everything together. I can officially say after playing Ark of Napishtim, things from other games start to make a lot more sense. Its story is by far the strongest point in this game. The gameplay sets many series staples moving forward. I mentioned in my review of East 5, Falcom struggled to find good balance with gameplay in East 5 and ultimately failed to move the series into a more action-oriented combat system and stepped away from the bump combat. East 6 delivers this in spades. Not only does it achieve it in involving the series into action, but it took many elements from East 5 and perfected them. Two more games would be made using this engine, only building up on what East 6 would use. These were Oath and Felgana, a remake of East 3, and East Origins. We've already reviewed Oath and Felgana, so we know how this engine works. Your attacks are combo based, utilizing one button to attack, another button is designated for magic, which we will touch upon in a moment. The jump button once again allows you to dodge enemy attacks, the combat is smooth and I had no real problems with it. I complained in Oath and Felgana that the boss pattern seemed to be unfair at times, E6 however does not suffer from that, which is odd considering Oath and Felgana came out after this entry. I do, however, feel overall that Oath and Felgana had boss fights that felt more rewarding as a whole. One thing I personally liked was being able to equip a healing item and taking that into the boss battle with you. Some might argue it takes away from the difficulty, but it was relieving to know if I was almost dead, I could heal and not have to worry about getting hit when a boss was mere moments away from being defeated. If you're up for a challenge though, you can always opt out of equipping healing items and give yourself a challenge. Let's talk a little bit about magic in E6, because it does an extremely good job at realizing what E5 was going for. Magic is imbued into the swords you are using, you have three blades, a wind blade, a fire blade, and a lightning blade. Each of these are acquired at certain parts of the story. 
Once your weapon is charged, you're able to unleash an attack of magic and send it hurling towards your enemy. Fire will send fireballs hurling towards your enemy, lightning will send a jolt of lightning across the battlefield, hitting multiple enemies back and forth, and wind will create a giant cyclone, capable of hitting nearby enemies and airborne enemies as well. You're going to have to learn which works best against enemies and bosses. It is also worth noting that certain swords will not work or do damage to enemies, forcing you to use a different sword, or you'll have to use a downward slash in order to hit an enemy to deal damage. Depending on the challenge you want, you can go into a boss fight with all three blades charged and lay waste to a boss with relative ease. But it's also not required, you can take away or add challenge if you so desire to. There is also a shop which you are able to upgrade your blades with MLS, that special metal. This is a regular drop by enemies. Upgrading your sword will make them stronger in strength and speed and also increase damage your magic will do. Alright, let's get into the negatives because there are a few major gripes I have with this game, particularly in how you level up. Most East games up to this point allowed you to grind fairly easy. East has always been a series if you're getting your ass kicked by a boss you can just level up a bit and make it a bit easier to defeat. E6 is no different, however there is a huge caveat to being able to do this. Most of the time bosses were able to be taken down if you were good enough at a fight, even if you were under leveled, you could get by dodging and learning the enemy's patterns. With this game that isn't the case, if you are not the recommended level for the boss fight you simply won't be able to do damage whatsoever meaning you have to go back and level up just to beat the boss. This is also the case with regular enemies. Moving into a new area in the past games often brought stronger enemies. Using a bit of precaution, I would level up rather quickly by slaying them and keeping myself healed or making a sprint back to the save point. However, if you're underleveled, you're not going to be able to deal damage to these enemies either. It becomes frustrating when you are hardly receiving EXP from monsters you're fighting, but the game won't let you kill enemies in the next screen over until you're a certain level. This was something I was very much glad to see go in future games. Sometimes you had to level up your sword as well, and if a specific boss had a weakness to a certain sword and you didn't level up that sword, you'd have to grind for Emilus to do that. It wasn't as bad as leveling up, but there was an occasion where this did affect me. Dash jumping has to be one of the most ridiculous things about the game. I finally got the hang of it, but it was tedious to learn, and some platforms are so narrow to land on it's easy to overshoot and undershoot. Some chests I just skipped out entirely as I figured they were just not worth it. Also in a late game dungeon, I had this part where I was stuck between a wall and a bunch of random enemies. With saw blades, I could not escape and was backed into the corner, and I just had to let them kill me. This only happened once, but I feel like it is still worth mentioning. East 6's music is really good. A lot of the tunes are soft and melodic, almost ambient if you will. It's a contrast to the game's usual rock themes, but the music is soothing and has that islandy feel to it, accompanying your journey throughout Canaan Island. While I'm not going to be humming or blasting the music anytime soon, I did enjoy the music quite well and it was very atmospheric. And giving the music a go as I started to type my script for this review, I actually started to really enjoy the music, like it really actually started to grow on me. E6's soundtrack is very different from other East titles, but it's very good because of that. And it really does deserve to be called a great soundtrack among the other East games that have had amazing soundtracks before them. Overall, E6 was a solid package. Its story and characters were where the game truly shined. It was also really fun in the gameplay department and fun to see the mechanics that would later be built upon in future installments. It's not hard to see why this game is beloved by so many and considered the savior of the series. While some quality of life things definitely hurt my experience because I played Oath and Felgana, I realize that that is my fault. Overall, East Arc of Napishtum is a great entry. I have no problem giving this my Gaming with Spoons seal of approval. A satisfactory game that blew my expectations for story out of the water, even with people telling me this game story was going to surprise me. I wasn't expecting to be blown away that much. I'm glad this entry did wonders for the series as it has helped shape what has become one of my favorite video game series of all time. Next up is E7, and I'm looking forward to seeing where Adolf's journey will take us next. This has been my review of East 6, 
Ark of Nepishtim. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can see more reviews just like this one. Facebook, Twitter links, all that will be down below in the description box. You guys can follow me over on social media. If you are at all curious about checking out our other East reviews, I will leave a playlist to those at the end of this video. And most importantly, stay happy, be happy, game happy. Spoons is checking out.